Welcome to the Triple P Podcast, Preds, Pucks, Pinoys, hosted by Justin Bradford and Matt Best. And welcome into another episode of Triple P, Preds, Pucks, and Pinoys, Justin Bradford, Matt Best, and hey, hey, there's news to talk about. Yeah, we can talk about about whatever we want on this show. It's a lot of fun. There's news to talk about, big, big news for Nashville, for the Predators fans, and even for Tampa Bay fans. The stadium series will be coming to Nashville next season. Uh, it's the, the 2022 Navy Federal Credit Union NHL Stadium Series. <gasps> Awful. We'll visit the what's home the, of the Tennessee Titans. What's the acronym on that? NIFQ. NIFQ. Ah, good old NIFQ. NIFQ. The NIFQ Stadium Series will go to Nissan Stadium February 26, 2022. How about that, though? right after basically the, the next season when you really think about it because the season was there weren't going to be any outdoor games but so the very next season after the, the national predators play in a winter classic they are now going to host the stadium series and we knew this is going to happen gary Bettman talked about it they, yep. they want to get nashville on there and new just had to work it out and we all knew too that it probably was not going to be a winter classic because the titans potentially hosting a playoff game would mess that up especially with the, the soccer stadium not being done yet. If, if there was a soccer stadium involved, I think that could have been a potential home for a winter classic, but we all knew it was going to be stadium series. And I'm fine with that because it still puts the predators on a national stage and it gets them a lot of publicity, gives them an opportunity to do something really unique and special. And it's, it should be fun. I mean, hosting Tampa Bay, I've seen plenty of memes out there. People scared like, Oh, actually get stadium series. Oh, they're they get Tampa, Tampa Bay, Bay. lightning. <laughs> I was going to ask you, would you have preferred that the Predators wait another year or two until the soccer stadium is done so they get the Winter Classic and not the no, stadium I'm series? Fine. No, I'm fine. No? He, he, strike while it's hot. Yeah? Strike strike while it's hot because the way that Nashville blow this out, it's it's going to get coverage. And the thing, too, that I, that I like, when we think about the way broadcasting is going to go, it's not going to be second fiddle, I don't think, like what NBC Sports would treat stadium series as. No, I, I, I think it'll be a lot more publicized than that. Absolutely. I mean, when you have ESPN and TBS involved now, it's they know it's going to be a feature event. And especially, say, Tampa wins the Stanley Cup again, potentially, then it's going to be a, an event hosting the current cup champs. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a big deal. You're, I think you're going to get them involved. I think if like there's a lot of what-ifs that could have played out into this. Like, if you asked me... If they had the stadium series and they were facing, let's say, Minnesota. But if you had waited a year or two and you could get the Winter Classic and face a Tampa Bay, a Toronto, a Rangers team, like big upper echelon, big money market teams kind of, I would then, yeah, I'd want to wait for the Winter Classic. But like you said, I think the biggest reason is strike while it's hot, especially if the Lightning can come away with another Stanley Cup after a Game 1 win here. And even if they don't, Tampa fans travel pretty well. Yeah, learn, learn, learn that this past season, being in the same division, with them being in the same division, there are plenty of Tampa fans, just like there are plenty of Carolina fans. Those fan bases travel well when you are good. <coughs> Excuse me. The water you okay? The wrong, took a sip of water and went down the wrong tube because I tried speaking while still swallowing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've heard that isn't an ideal thing to um, do. No, no, it's not. You would know. So. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. You would yeah, be see, alone. See? Yeah, drinking your protein powder. Uh, this is water. <laughs> but the, they, the fans travel well, and just like what happened in Dallas. I mean, the Predators fans traveled extremely well, and that was a fantastic game, aside from some big issues that happened afterwards of people getting out, and I know even getting in. The game itself and seeing the fan base to show up, all, all things <laughs> being equal to where we didn't have to deal with, well, one, a person dying on the main concourse in the, in, in the pathways there, uh, but in the exit strategy and everything too, but the stadium itself, people showed up, people are going to show up for this. People are going to travel for it. You're going to get, this is the type of event too, that brings in people that aren't fans of either fan base. Me. And that's what's <laughs> cool. Yeah. It's good. So yeah, let's look at it from that perspective, Matt, especially, yeah, you talk about the Preds, you cover the Preds, but obviously you're not a fan of the Preds per se like that. I mean, well, we do this because, we try to provide a perspective that caters to fans, but we're not fans ourselves. Yeah. That's, that's the whole thing about, you know, being professionals. 
Uh, I mean, so, that's one P word to describe us, yeah. That's one P Lice. being the other. Pedic. Uh, so, Matt, it says someone in Toronto, when you see this announcement, so let's cover the whole thing. I mean, Bettman just released a lot of things, which typically happens. Winter Class is going to be feature St. Louis Blues uh, and Minnesota Wild at Target Field, which will be pretty cool. Uh, the All-Star Weekend is going to take place in Las Vegas. That's going to blow up. I mean, that's going to be it's awesome. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. And then you have the Stadium Series with Nashville and Tampa. When you see the variety in these things and these events like that, too, what does it say to you as someone based in Toronto in terms of seeing the growth of hockey and that just what it means for the NHL, seeing that they feel confident that these events can make money in these markets? It, it just shows how much the NHL has grown and the fact that the NHL is willing to take the risk to go to these not – non-hockey markets but not traditional hockey markets i mean vegas yeah i'm gonna call that a hockey market now because even if you go to vegas and you're not there for a hockey game and you go oh shit the golden knights are playing let's buy a ticket <laughs> like that's just what happens now because it's part of the entertainment culture whereas in nashville and you and i have talked about this ad nauseum about how tennessee as a whole and nashville specifically has just become this big tourist destination i don't want to call it a tourist trap yet but <laughs> people are willing to flock to tennessee and just go there to experience the culture if right. you're not from there regardless if there's a hockey game or not and now i think people who've been saying oh i want to go to nashville i want to go to nashville i think that hockey fan base will now be like well i've got a reason to go to nashville now i can go experience this outdoor game in a warmer climate it's not going to be freezing cold like you get a stadium series here in canada and boston etc cetera, etc cetera. But I think it's just showing that the NHL is now able to take those risks, even coming out of a pandemic. It's just big cojones by Bettman and friends to balance out all the stupid crap he was saying about the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, yeah. But it's it's a very positive step by the NHL that they're willing to go and do this. And I mean, they're doing it the right way. Um, they know Vegas will make a ton of money. They know that they're making a smart play by having the Tampa Bay Lightning be that other team for the Nashville Predators. And I think Bettman knows as well, and he's looking at this Predators roster in itself, and I think part of his team will go to him and be like, hey, listen, this team might not be great in a couple of years, so we got to go now if we want to use Nashville as a hotspot destination. Because nothing like – if this team has a roster that makes a project to be a bottom 10 team – there's no chance in hell that a stadium series goes there. That it just doesn't happen. If the Leafs have a terrible team, if the Rangers have a terrible team, if the Boston Bruins have a terrible team, you can still do that because you will mm -hmm. still find the hockey fans to go and sell out that arena at absurd ticket costs. Yeah. Whereas in Nashville, it'll be like, well, I don't think the general public's going to go out and pay an absorbent amount of money. I mean, just look at this Montreal Stanley Cup final game. There's tickets going on sale in Montreal for 16 grand for a pair. Oh, uh, no. Right? And I was talking Literally. to a friend of the show, John, and he's like, yeah, I went and saw a cup final game for 200 bucks. It's like, yep. That's just, that's how that happens. Whereas in Montreal, everyone's like, c'est la boom, let's go to the game! And that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. Because I have a friend who's a Tampa Bay Lightning fan, and she's like, it is so much cheaper for me to get on a plane, stay in a hotel at a resort kind of thing in Tampa and go to that game there compared to driving to Montreal, which for us and hers herself would be six hours in a car. So that's tank gas, like two tanks when you come home kind of thing. It's absolutely insane that that's the way those ticket price costs, but that just shows how strong of a hockey market and how well they could survive compared to 200 bucks to go to a Stanley Cup game. So how about this uh, kind of making its rounds on Twitter from uh, a Carolina Hurricanes fan. There's some people upset that Carolina did not get it because they were supposed to have the next one, right? Mm -hmm. I'll preface this with... <laughs> I'll preface this with the Carolina Hurricanes released a statement about this as well. From Don Waddell, President and General Manager... Earlier this year, we came to a mutual agreement with league officials that it would be in our organization's best interest to postpone the outdoor game by one season in order to assure a safe environment in front of a packed house at Carter Finley Stadium. We can't wait to showcase our amazing fans in the very near future. Another one. The source said the Carolina Hurricanes, whose 2021 Stadium Series game in Raleigh, North Carolina, was postponed in December, deferred their outdoor game to the 22-23 season. And another 
<laughs> Another quote, the league wanted to make sure we were fully in and would push to sell close to 60,000 seats, Waddell said. We are guaranteeing the NHL they'll get to a certain point of revenue, and then after that, there's a split between the Hurricanes and the NHL. We're not guaranteed to even make the revenue of a home game. We think we can get there, but we recognize that risk and sold it to the league that will take the risk for what we think it could do to our franchise in the, in the buildup and in the aftermath to monetize and capitalize it. Well, apparently there's a Hurricanes fan that didn't see all this, that it was Carolina's mutual decision with the league to defer the game their own best interest and went on a rant. If I if I go on Twitter right now and type in who I think you're talking about, am I going to be right? No, no. That, oh, okay. that person actually quote tweeted and went, bro, you're making us look bad. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, but I'll, I'll just read this because people are going to see it, but I, I'm going to add some, some flair to it. <clears throat> oh, wow, this? I see this. Okay. You, re- you ready for this? Yeah. F Nashville and Tampa. This game was supposed to be Carolina's. We worked so hard and dedicated tax dollars to host the game, and they're actively renovating Carter Finley Stadium because we were told we were hosting the outdoor game there. Not only that, this would have served as a huge fan base booster and would have gained attention for us. We wanted this way more than Nashville and Tampa did combined and getting effed over by the NHL last minute by essentially saying, nope, you're incorrect not hosting it. We want Tampa and Nashville instead because those markets will definitely bring huge viewership, despite our market size being drastically larger than Nashville's by about 600,000. So just screw all league officials, Tampa fans, Nashville fans, and most importantly, Gary Bettman. Be ready for a lawsuit from the city of Raleigh as this took millions of dollars the city put forth to host the game itself and the revenue loss in the local businesses. In addition... NCSU and the Centennial Authority owner of PNC Arena has also dedicated millions of dollars to renovate Carter Finley Stadium for the specific event. It's bullshit that the league thinks it's okay to do this to us and don't make up any crap about attendance concerns because that was going to be full no matter what. A lawsuit, Matt. Why are people so stupid? A lawsuit from the city of Raleigh. <laughs> Oh, that's like people screaming my, HIPAA when things don't have to deal with HIPAA. My favorite part was the by about six hundred thousand. Like, let, let, let's should we compare? There's a let's huge see. difference between market size and people who actually give a damn about like the team itself. Right. Like, uh, it's not okay. a comparable stat. It's just a dumb stat to bring up. Also, oh. this is what happens when you're a fan of a team and you think that like you're the national spokesperson for a team it just doesn't work out for you because then you just look like a dumbass at the end of the day yeah so let's go with I'm, I'm on the I'm on the Nielsen tracking site here okay yeah so <laughs> Raleigh Durham in terms of their DMA which is their their viewing area this is how this is folks is ranked 28th. This is from 2020. Sorry, Raleigh Durham ranked 27th with 1.025 million. Nashville in 2020 was ranked 28th, 983,180. So I don't know where that 600,000 number is. There, I I, I found I found what this person's math was. He's oh counting he or she. I don't even know who this is. Is counting Raleigh Durham Chapel Hill and. Uh, Fayetteville? Fayetteville? Fayetteville. Uh, and then just counting Nashville alone and not counting surrounding That's counties. That's not how DMAs work, dumbass. No. I don't know what this person... So it's he said that... Market area. He said all of those combined for Carolina's market at 2.5 million and Nashville at 1.9. I, like... People need to pass a test to use the internet. I'm, like... I- so how these ratings work too? The, this is just Raleigh Durham. It's a metro area. It's a DMA. That's a designated market area. The Nielsen ratings as TV homes. Those are homes that are counted for the ratings. That's what you go by when you're. In, I'm someone in media marketing. <laughs> when I'm choosing a designated mar- media market, I'm selecting the Nashville DMA, which is basically all Middle Tennessee, the immediate counties in Southern Kentucky. And that's about it. And maybe like one county in northern Alabama. That's typically it because they all separate out. That's mm-hmm. the Nashville media area. When, when you see a weather person or a meteorologist describe uh, the, the Nashville viewing area is what they cover. 
that's what it is basically is the viewing area whereas where their tv antennas are broadcast to or even radio market similar but nowhere near as strong because it's different for every station that's what it is they're basically identical My- they're basically identical okay i have one more question about this <laughs> stadium series <laughs> whole thing before we talk about something else is my god my blood will just boil jerseys i've seen a couple mock-ups around about no. people thank you so much no thank you no they're thank not you. they better not go Titan thank Blue. you thank you thank you thank you no. i like no i feel like a lot of people are really like this idea to mix the titan blue and then just slap the preds logo on it and i just that no. looks not great. No, and here's here's the thing that does concern me though. Winter classic jerseys tend to be a lot better than the stadium series jerseys. Yes. Stadium series do tend to get a little kooky. Yes. Which does concern me a little bit. And here, I'm totally fine with crossing over and including a bit of Titans in there because the stadium they're gonna play in. I mean the hometown crowd, things like that, fine. I mm-hmm. think by all means find a way. But that is not the way. No, it Titans is not. State, powder blue, no. Mm-mm. The, no, no, no. Because then again, it's gonna, then it's going to remind me of the Pittsburgh powder blue. Yep. And here, like the thing I enjoy about Winter Classic jerseys and Stadium Series jerseys is that they put a unique twist on existing color schemes. Right. Right. Like they don't go, we have a football team. Let's take their colors. That's just not how it works. Right. Because uh, I just think about the Leafs going, oh, the Blue Jays have an iconic baby blue. Let's use that. It's like, no, the Raptors are purple. Let's use that. No, no. just stick with your color scheme and do something fun with it. Bring back a retro right. jersey color and then mix it maybe with a fan favorite logo and yeah. then see what you come up with. Basically, it's just take all the crap you've ever had in your franchise history, huck it into a blender and just press generate, <laughs> generate, generate, generate and see what works. So speaking of blenders, there's probably going to be plenty of blended drinks at this one thing that, that we're working on already. Mm. Uh, for, the, for those that know, uh, Penalty Box Radio, we like to throw parties and trips and everything. I mean, we threw a great trip to D.C. That was during the mom's trip where the Predators whooped up the Capitals in Washington. We had a big group there. It was a, it was a New Year's trip as well. Then we had this big, huge group go to Dallas for the Winter Classic, and I threw this awesome New Year's Eve party and a ballroom that was fully catered and everything. We had cornhole boards. We had so we had activities. We had a DJ with dancing, plenty of giveaways as well. And it was a fun time and a great way to spend it. We even had uh, mascots show up to our New Year's Eve party. That's cool. I can always we had, mess We had with Victor that. E. Green and Nash show up. So it's pretty cool to have both the Dallas and the National mascot show up there too. So already what we're working on, to tease this out is what i want to do i want to throw a stadium series after party Mm -hmm. it's it's going to be on a saturday so it's perfect because most people most people won't if they're working like a white collar blue collar job probably won't have to work the next day i know plenty of you will and try to find time to do it but i want to throw a new i want i want to throw i want to throw a party and hold on hold on let's talk about the party first okay I want to throw a party and I want it to be a bash. I want it to be, you know, what you see at award shows, things like that. We're going to do it where there's going to be food. There's going to be drinks and there's going to be music. I want it to be a party. Win or lose, we're going to celebrate that this event came to Nashville and we're going to celebrate you, the fans, and I want you all to come. Yes, there's going to be a cost to it, <laughs> but I'll work on getting sponsors to try to keep costs down for everybody because I want as many people that can come as possible within reason because there's probably going to be a cap. So, be on the lookout for once we get the details figured out on that we're going to make it happen because stadium series usually starts late afternoon when they do it i think and so it's not like it's going to be typically stadium series man i don't think starts like seven o'clock at night right no you no, no, start no. late afternoon yeah when it's you're done by evening because the sun and the glare they try to exactly like they try to stay away from the game ending around sunset because that's just a nightmare exactly and again for those that haven't seen the average temperature in february 26th in nashville is 55 degrees well, that's summer. That's the, uh, shut up. That's the average temperature. The games have been played in a little bit warmer. Games have been obviously played in colder. As if you are not from Nashville and you're curious, February in Tennessee can be very tricky. 
because it could be in the 70s potentially or we could have an ice storm or snowstorm that's just right before we get to spring here in nashville february it could be fun so i'm just saying it could i'm just gonna wear a hoodie and jeans is what you're saying you'll be fine so after party we're gonna make it happen somewhere we're gonna try to figure this out i'm already working with ships and trips travel and susan there who helps plan all these things with me but my goal obviously to be to bring some special guests don't expect players. We're not going to get current players. <laughs> that just that, that doesn't happen. That's... I've already had people ask. Like, no, <laughs> no, no. It's the season. It's during the season. We're not going to get what a players. come get buck wild at a party right before your With big fans. game. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, or right after. The, either way, it's in the middle of the season. Or right after. That. Yeah, that that's yeah, just not, that. not going to happen. But no. I'm going to work on getting some special guests, especially because we're local. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. Also. What we're going to try to work out as well, Matt, if you want to say this one so you can break something. Uh, we are going to attempt to record a live podcast, probably at a bar or a brewery or something fun like that. There's plenty of those. Yeah, there's a lot of locations that we're going to look over and just record the podcast live the day before the podcast. Uh, hang out. Up. Yeah, hang out with people, have a few drinks. Have a few fun games, some giveaways, all that kind of stuff. We'll record it. I've got a bunch of equipment I can bring down. You've got stuff. And uh, we'll probably have some fans up on the stage with us, chatting with us, some listeners. Uh, we'll do a special edition, and then we can just go do a bunch of fun stuff for the rest of the night. It, we, we basically want to make this a PBR, Triple P, like super fun Predators weekend kind of thing. And just, I will probably come down for four or five days. I'll come down before and then stay a day after, and then yep. go home. I will be flying. I will not be driving. <laughs> so if you want to take me to some fun places or give me some recommendations, I am all ears. Uh, I'd love to meet a lot of people that have just been along with us for this ride since Locked On. So I think that'd be a good time. Um, We're going to make it fun. Yeah. I, I mean, you've heard of podcasts doing these meetups and stuff like that before. We're not going to do stupid, crazy stuff. But we will have a lot of fun. Like, we're just not going to do dumb crap for the sake of doing dumb crap. But I'll probably do dumb crap (laughs) at some point. I mean, a few drinks and we'll see what happens. Please don't get arrested. I can't do that. Because I'm going to have tickets to go to the game. So I can't That's true. can't get arrested. So we have plenty of fun things happening. That's why I want to do a, a reaction episode, folks, because of that. And we have another thing because there's other stuff that came out today. Let's go ahead and... Segway. Uh, <laughs> Elliot Friedman and his 31 thoughts obviously mentioned Nashville in this, but it's another name he's heard in terms of talks potentially being on the move would be Victor Arvidsson. It's nice that there's some traction on it. <laughs> I mean, what is, what, when Friedman's saying it, then there's some legitimacy towards that it. That means like... he's heard things. That means he's heard things because in Friedman's 31 thoughts, number 26, he, before the news broke, <laughs> he talked about Nashville Stadium Series. Yeah, and I mean, like, out of all the blurbs on that 31 Thoughts, the Arvidsson one's kind of short, because there's not yeah. much he can really say, but the fact that it has been brought up should be good news, that there, there's, there's teams just watching RV and going, yeah, we could probably use him, which means there's teams that are looking at other pieces of the Predators, I can guarantee you that much. Because if there's interest in Arvidsson, there's going to be interest in the other players right. that... David Poyle wants to move out. I mean, I think everybody on this team is not, or is touchable except for like two names. Um, but it's just good news that there's legitimate interest in Victor Arvidsson. What do you think the uh, asking price right now is with David Poyle for Victor? Well, it, it, see, what's curious because Elliot Freeman here is this tough, hardworking player. Doesn't mention anything about injury history or anything no. like that. So that's what makes me wonder, do teams have a concern about Arvidsson's injury history or do they see the hardworking player and just understand that he's probably going to miss 15 games a season or something, or at least. I think you have to look at Arvidsson and just go, yeah, he's going to miss 10 to 15. If that's the case, I mean, with his cap hit and the the hardworking player he is, they could probably get a second and a mid-level prospect for him. I think so. I think bare minimum, that's what you ask for. Is yeah, a second and, and mid level, okay. and if a team, if you get a, into a bidding war and you get a B level prospect in a second, then you're happy. For yeah. me, when I hear mid level prospect, I think of like C grade could make the NHL as a top six winger or top six forward, but will most likely be bottom six. Like to me, that's a C level prospect. Yeah, I think of like a third or fourth round pick. 
Yeah, a third or fourth round pick or a second round pick that has just been kind of crappy and needs a fresh yeah. start. Or like a college player to where you see potential there, but you don't know if it's going to pan out. Yeah. Like like, like a potential that could have been better, but ended up not being like Jimmy Vesey. Yeah. I mean, you- there was potential there, didn't pan out, thankfully for the Predators, right? But that's the kind of prospect to where it's like, you know, he's doing really well in college. You don't know if he's going to make it and just see if things pan out. That type of prospect, maybe. Do you think if a team comes knocking on David Boyle's door, and there's two teams, one goes, we'll give you a second rounder and like one of these aforementioned kind of prospects, and another team goes, we'll give you a second, a fourth, and a fifth. What do you do? A second, fourth, and fifth. I think so, too. I think you Easily. just clean, just get that contract right off the books, clear up that Easily. cap space, and take oh, those picks. That's an easy question because then that puts them in charge of who they're mm-hmm. taking in the draft instead of getting a player that maybe didn't fit their bill. I just, I, I when you mention VC to me, that's just intriguing, though, because that to me is yeah. a player where it's like, how much do you believe in your development staff? to take this player that this team couldn't really work with and make him your own and make this player into what a lot of people projected him to be kind of thing. Like right. that's, that's, I think is a trade off between B level prospect and then do your own thing. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, I, I would definitely take the draft picks. Yeah, me too. Anything. Because I yeah. think you can easily flip draft picks compared to uh, just, I don't want to call them project players, but just yeah, unsure players. Yeah. Project's fair because, I mean, most of the time, anything under a second round pick typically becomes some sort of project where you're having to keep track of them and what's going on to see how they're going to mold, unless they just completely surprise you in the league that they're playing in currently, kind of thing. Yeah. Unless they have like this weird breakout season where they play with X player who's going to be a superstar and you go, well, might have something on our hands here. Right. Right. So, okay. A couple little things because so much just happened today that we just want to touch on real quick. Those of you that don't know, the, the NHL draft and expansion draft are going to be on ESPN, ESPN2. Mm-hmm. Still, that's ESPN. That's on that network. It's big for them to carry the first round uh, like that. Also, Sportsnet, obviously, I mean, we are we all we know Canada takes care of that stuff when it comes we're, to we're broadcasting. Not bad at it. Uh, they broadcast those things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, the draft, this year's draft is going to be on ESPN. That's going to be, I mean, Bucciagross is going to host the live coverage round one. That's it's pretty neat. That, yeah. that ESPN's just diving right in, and apparently ESPN's announcing their talent for the NHL season. What tomorrow or very, or this week? ESPN, like I think, is taking Cassie Campbell Pascal from Sportsnet. That's been yeah, rumored. Saw that, which is a, an excellent grab. Yeah, she saw is that. phenomenal. So this, those are big right there. And then next year's draft, the 2022 draft, is coming is going back to Montreal since it got canceled in Montreal for 2020. We are going I tickets. I had airplane tickets to. We are going. And that's the one where it took WestJet seven months to get me my refund. <laughs> uh, but we are, I, I'm, we're going. I, I mean, like, that I, Montreal I, is a destination city for me. There is no question that I will be going like that. It, Alex and I had our Airbnb booked already in Ville de Notre Dame, so I was I was prepared. I, mm-hmm. I did my like, what's a what is a American friendly neighborhood for an Airbnb? Right off the subway, boom! I like we were so pumped and excited to go to Montreal to get some smoked meats uh, and bagels. Oh yeah, yeah. we there is no question that you and I will be making an appearance there. Yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna just... I'm make sure I get a sponsor and make my way up there because it's not going to be a cheap flight. I think my flight was going to take me from Nashville to, to Toronto and then Toronto to Montreal. That's hey, going to be you could fun. get on the train in Toronto. I'm not getting. It's a nice train ride. Like I'm, I'm not sure it is, but beautiful. I'm not getting on the train. I'll I'll fly. Thanks. <laughs> I'll fly with you. How's that? No, I won't. I'm if probably, we could work that out, man, wouldn't that be something? I'm probably gonna drive. It's way I cheaper know. for me to just drive up there. Why don't you just take the train then, Matt? I might if I want to get drunk on the train. Oh for God. being honest, like, and then if I don't want to drive six it's hours really home, nice. six or seven hours <laughs> home, probably hungover, I will just take the train. So plenty of news broke on on Monday. So pretty fun things, including Nashville, just in, for the league. ESPN, I'm just looking forward to that as well because they're going to have some good, talented people. And I have high expectations, so you better not let me the F down, ESPN, <laughs> when it comes to what you're going to be doing. And TBS as well. They're hiring so much talent as well. And I just I hope they don't get a bunch of, like, goon guys no. in there because of the name. I hope they're looking at the overall breadth of actual talent 
of who can actually represent the game well for their network and be associated with it is not going to draw ire from the fan bases. I think so. I think the rumored name so far shows that they're heading in that direction. Absolutely. The only crappy part is no Bob McKenzie. This but is going to be Bob. Isn't he retired? He's semi-retired, but this will be his first NHL draft that he's not actually doing anything for. Because he's retired, though, right? No, because TSN like won't have any rights. Oh, I mean, but he's quasi-retired already. He just drops a bomb, an Uncle Bob yeah, bomb. Yeah, but he wanted to do like things like this. He wanted to okay. do fun this specials. Is thing. Yeah, yeah, these are the fun things. So yeah. it's just that is sad. It is kind of sad because as much that as people like sad. to think here in Canada, there's a rivalry between Sportsnet and TSN. There, there really isn't. There's just they don't yeah. really care. Um, my, my big thing is that I wish it wouldn't just be NHL Network carrying the extra rounds because most streaming systems and apps here in the States don't carry NHL Network. Yeah, it's awful. You literally have to have cable or satellite. I think maybe I think even Sling got rid of NHL Network. I'm not sure. Correct Why? me if I'm wrong. I don't know. Like none of the apps have it. That's just... It's not like NFL Network or anything like that where most of them have it. But same thing with Sinclair and Bally Sports is not on any of these streamers, mm -hmm. any of those. So you have to have cable or internet. Like, this is stupid. You realize how many people are on Hulu or YouTube TV or Sling or any of those? Millions of people that you're not having viewers with. I... Just seems like a whiff to not maximize the growth. Yeah. So that's one thing I wish the extra rounds were. Even... It's ESPN2. Put it on. Put it on ESPN 8, the Ocho. I was going to say, care. put it on the Ocho. Who cares? Put it on the Ocho. Or ESPN Plus, where I could stream it on where I could stream it on the app. Put yeah. the extra rounds on ESPN Plus. That would make so much more sense because then anybody could watch it. They have ESPN Plus. Too I mean, easy. people that have the Disney Hulu package would be able to watch it on ESPN Plus. It just makes too much sense. Yeah, they could watch Loki and then watch some hockey. Oh, man. Kind of sad about the last episode of Loki, by the way. Don't be sad. There's plenty in there. Yeah, but there's no Owen Wilson in that episode. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, I do have one announcement that I'd like to get out there before we wrap up. Oh, this is just me being selfish and using this platform to, like, set out feelers for my other job. Um, oh, okay. It's like, you didn't prep me for something. No, 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 no. I'm leaving. Goodbye. No. Um... At my other job at the Mayo Media Network, if you are a football kind of guy or gal and you would like to be a host, this is a paid opportunity. Uh, we are above industry standard in terms of pay. I promise you that much. You'll be working directly with me, my boss, Pat Mayo, as well. And uh, we're looking for someone who knows football, whether that's fantasy football, um, that's betting on football, DraftKings football, so like DFS football, either, even, even if it's FanDuel kind of thing. Um, we're looking for a host. Basically, get paid to talk about football. Um, but you do need to know how to be on air kind of thing. Like, this isn't a we'll build you up kind of thing. There's kind of a baseline we're looking for right now. But this is open to graduates. This is open to people who are probably or that could be still in school. This is open to people who have five plus years of experience. If you're good, you're good. That's basically what it comes down to. If you're good and you can work your ass off, you're the kind of person that I want to work with. Uh, if this is interesting to you, tweet at me, or not tweet at me, just DM me, at Best of Matt. DMs are always open, and uh, we'll figure out how we can get a demo tape sent to me, and maybe we can get you paid to talk about football this year. I know this is a hockey podcast, but I mean, if you're a sports fan, you, you might just be listening here and hanging out. Yeah, yeah, you never know. You never know. So there's an opportunity right there. And hey, did we have, when are we supposed to choose our winner? Uh, I have it set for this Wednesday, so you have one more day left based on okay. when you listen to this. So next so, episode, we will announce our winner. And what do they get to potentially win, Matt? 100 bucks paypal right to them. $100, dollar, dollar. the dollar. easiest giveaway ever. There are a ton of entries, so I'm quite ton happy with that. And you enter by following us on Twitter. I'm at Justin B. Bradford. He's at Best of Matt. Following the show, Triple P Podcast underscore. And all the subscribing to us on all these different channels, following the Facebook page, all these different types of things get you entries into it. And we continue to see this grow. So we appreciate so many of you following it and already interacting with us and everything. And again, as always, if you have topics you'd like us to discuss this off season, shoot that our way. And we're going to continue to bring you as much coverage as we possibly can and just talk about things. I mean, if you want us to talk about Loki a little bit more, then, then we can get into that, especially because we're basically almost halfway through, we're halfway through the season already. Mm -hmm. There's only six episodes, so after the next one, 
after Wednesday. There's going to be plenty more to go. I mean, there's Star Wars Bad Batch. I don't know if Matt's had the time no. to watch that no. yet, uh, which has been absolutely fantastic. Dave Filoni's been awesome. Uh, there's been some movies out as well that I've enjoyed. I'm not sure if Matt, again, has had the time to enjoy some movies not really. in general. So, but anyways, if you have things you want us to discuss, drop it in there. And when Matt finds the time to catch up on pop culture, then we can discuss those topics because I know he's a very, very busy gentleman. I uh, I kind of had the time, but I rewatched Ted Lasso if his season two comes out next month. So I That's needed fair. to rewatch and, it. And he's been golfing as well, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, all I do, like my boss paid me last week and he's like, boom, here you go. You can go golf again. I was like, you're right. I was and like, hey, hey, you got your second shot book too. I do. Ooh. I can finally get fully vaccinated. July 8th is when I get sick basically for a day <laughs> now open the border and let my buddy come man if the border's not open for february and people are joking around oh, with me on twitter oh. i will <laughs> lose my shit it is not even funny it better be. oh. i'll just just get a cut out of me and put me in the stadium and then get a cut out of me put me at the after party get a cut out of me and and here's what i'll say too for that our live podcast i will make sure that we have filipino dessert to share with people Yes, Something. and and like Something. finger foods kind of thing. Well, okay, that's that's asking a lot if we're having a brewery that has their own food. I'm just saying. Oh, we'll something. true shit. I'll make sure we have a dessert because dessert you can do small bites, right? Yes, yes, yes. And it'll last long in a cooler or whatnot. We'll have a dessert there, whether it's like ubi roll or babinka or mm. fruit salad or something. We're gonna have something there that you can try. It's Filipino food. So is there make sure you said a good Filipino joint nearby? There's one Filipino restaurant. Okay. Like actual Filipino restaurant. The other one's fusion. Okay. I'm going to come if I come early and like some of our pals want to come along. We'll go for oh, lunch yeah, or we, something. Let's, let's go. Yeah, we'll, we'll go, go for lunch and then like teach them like this is this. This is this. I don't like this. Yes, Justin absolutely. likes this. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I ha if this is coming to me, this is what happens. When, when we're just recording like this, we don't have much of a um, plan. There <laughs> is, it's called Maymax Market. That's the one that's in Laverne. And what's cool about them is they actually do a feast. Yum, okay. You have to order it in advance. So this is one of those things you just have to let them know in advance, but they will do this. And basically, they'll, it's called a, a Boodle Fight Fiesta Platter. They have that's those. That's helpful. Um, here, I mean, let me tell you what's in this Fiesta platter. You get Filipino pork barbecue, so you get lechon, mm -hmm. lupia Shanghai, lunganisa, grilled squid, grilled pompano, pancit, and fried shrimp. You get you get the basics. You get all you the get food the basics, groups. But it's a way to share with yeah. people. It's you need to come on. But you get to share it. Yeah. Yeah. And multiple things. So that's what we can do is we can place orders in advance, mm -hmm. and we can we can we can have a, a party there. Mm -hmm. Now that being said. All together. Everyone that we meet up with, you must take me to the best barbecue joints around the town. Thank you very much. Oh, well, yeah. We, that's that's my deal. <laughs> no, well, you you know everyone's going to take care of you. You're the you're the outsider. I am. I I truly am. Yeah, but, you're uh, the outsider. It's going to be fine. It will be a lot of fun though. I I feel like what do we have? Six, seven months, seven months. Yeah, seven we have months. time to plan. Oh yeah. But get ready to party, folks. Get ready to party in Nashville. Okay. Make sure you go to the link tree. On our profile, click that to enter the contest to win $100. Follow us. We'll have more for you next week. Or if news breaks, if there's something big that breaks, we'll make sure we do a reaction episode for you. Just know that we're going to promise you one episode a week from the offseason when news breaks, like the draft. Yeah. Free agency. We're going to have extra coverage for that because we're not going to make you wait four days for a reaction from those. We're going to have you covered. Uh, also, if you're interested in sponsoring, we have sponsorship packages available for 30 second live reads for title sponsors things like that dm us with any information my dms are open i just screen them first <laughs> <laughs> all right folks thanks so much for listening to triple p podcast Preds, pucks and punois this is justin bradford and matt best we'll talk to you next time bye i just tell people to f off <laughs>